A mosey. A mosey is a word that can be used as a verb and a noun, otherwise a gerund, J-E-R-U-N-D. So to mosey means to leisurely drive around, observe things. A mosey is the act, is, is the act of moseying. It's, it's an expression to say, get out, see what's around you. Do it in a leisurely fashion. Maybe you'll learn something. curious about what your city looks like, if you have an interest in knowing more about Columbus, well, take a mosey, and that's what we do on occasion. Now, right now, we're crossing the Scioto River on the Broad Street Bridge. We're coming from the high bank on the east side of the river to the lower bank and coming into what we now call historic Franklinton. Franklinton was the first settlement by Europeans in central Ohio. When I was a kid growing up in Columbus, we called it the Bottoms. The reason we called it the Bottoms was because it was the land that was flooded when the Scioto River would overflow. An interesting place, Franklinton. Let's take a little mosey and see what's going on. Perhaps the most famous street through Franklinton is Broad Street. And on our left, a pagoda-style building was a train station. It's now the home of the local firefighters union. And then there's some regular eating places. On our right, Phillips Coney Island, an institution. You'll find many of those. We also have A.D. Farrow, which is the Harley Davidson motorcycle shop. And we're coming up on Holy Family, the local Catholic parish on our right. And the Columbus Diocese some years ago was able to fund a re-putting back of the steeple on that church. And on our right is the William Henry Harrison house. And let's, let's, hang, let's hang a left and go check that out. So as you just mosey, just just mosey, get get out. Sunday afternoons are a good time when there's no drive time traffic. And you can just get a sense of what the various neighborhoods of Columbus are like. That's of course if you're interested, if you have a curiosity about what's going on in your city. Here's Franklin Elementary School, but because of the change in population, the loss of density, this public school is now closed. And then here is here is an interesting site. It is perhaps the oldest building in Franklin County that sits on its original foundation. It's called the Deerdorf House. It's a log cabin. Let's just stop in front of it over here. It'll be to my right, and you'll see the sign. It says, the David Deerdorf House. Now, you can see it's, it's in need of repair, and this is an ongoing project and we're not sure where it's going to end up, but someone has a good intention to try to bring it back. Now we're going to do something here and see if we can cross Broad Street, which we can. All right, we're going to stop right over here at this house. Lucas Sullivan. Lucas Sullivan was the person who was considered the uh, architect of how Franklin was laid out. And here is the Lucas Sullivan land office just off West Broad Street. And it's right next to Holy Family Church. You can see it's on Gift Street. Gift, it's called Gift Street because parcels of land were given as gifts to certain people. Now, what happened to uh, Franklinton and what happened to several Columbus neighborhoods was it got cut up when the freeway system came through. Now, we're going to go across 315, and 315 was one of those sit one of those uh, highways that split Franklinton and everybody had to adjust after that. Now we do have a car agency still here. Byers has a car agency but it's moving out to Grove City. Graham Ford was here but it closed. A realization of the economic model of where you have to be to sell cars. Franklin's also the home of Mount Carmel Hospital which is considering uh, some adjustments in where it delivers its services. Here's Souter. In fact, let's take a let's take a right turn on Souter here, being careful with our traffic, because there's an interesting plaque down here. There, a bridge was put across the Souter River up here, which gives access 
to Franklinton from 33, uh, which is helpful. But you've got to know these streets to be able to get around well. So we're going to cross this bridge. We call it the Arthur Bolt Bridge. It's named after the first African American born in Franklin. Now, if you look over here at these, this construction, a company called Orange Barrel, an advertising company, is going to put its headquarters here in the process of building its its uh, facility. Now, if you take a look in front of us, we're crossing the boat bridge, the Arthur Boat Bridge. And here's the sign on the right. Again, the railroads are important uh, uh, lines of demarcation in any community. Franklin's in no exception. So we're on Rogers, proceeding south on Rogers, going under the major railroad bridge, and coming into Franklin's. You can see the housing stock. Most of it's wood. It doesn't have the same characteristics of German village which built with brick, mostly. Houses in Franklinton were basically wood framed, and you can imagine with the flooding that occurred, some of the damage. But you can see a lot of vacant houses in Franklinton. And here's one. It says lease to own, five hundred dollars down, two fifteen a month. So if you are interested, you could purchase property in Franklinton, probably relatively inexpensively, but you're going to have to be committed to keep it up. And there is, in some areas, an improvement in housing. Franklinton. But again, look to your right here on Rogers. There's some more vacant houses. This is this is not unusual just for Franklinton. It's prevalent in many of our older city neighborhoods, and that's a struggle we're dealing with. How do you eliminate this blight and make sure you have a vibrant community? But there are there is vibrancy going on in Franklinton. If you look at Martin on the right, there are this is where some investment, some folks have moved in. Uh, and put some money into these homes. So if you will, there is an effort to spruce up the housing in Franklinton. It'll take time, but it's happening. Now, again, we're going out Broad Street West. And here's another railroad that comes across Franklinton. And let's just keep going west and you get a sense of of what we talk about because we talk about the hilltop you can clearly understand what we mean by that as you proceed west on Broad Street you'll see there's a rise on Broad Street and it comes up to the hilltop well at that point Franklin stops again I, I, I like maps I go to Dean Ringel's office frequently and get the Franklin County map and I give them to a lot of people now I know most people say why use maps get a GPS well a GPS will tell you where to go to point A to B but it won't give you the full impression of what the, the territory looks like. You need to look at a map, see the streets, and ideally, if you have a top topographical map, you can see the elevations. Now, I know that may not interest some people, but I am fascinated by maps, and I'm fascinated by driving through neighborhoods and getting a feel for what's going on. You know, when I was in the military, you, you become proficient at map reading, and uh, when I was in Vietnam, I had a map of the United States on the wall, and I thought when I got home where I was gonna go visit. So I have a fascination with maps, or a very, maps are items that you can dream with. Where are you gonna go? What's there? Who do you suppose lives there? Let's go see, let's check it out. So that's what we're doing today. We're checking out Franklinton. Now, the thing to note is that there is a flood wall that the federal government basically has built around Franklinton. The result of which has allowed insur certain types of insurance policy to be secured and buildings to be built that can be different than they were before. If you look to our my left over here on the south side of Broad Street, you can see this shopping mall, it's been elevated. Well, the reason it was elevated, to build it there, you had to build it at such a height that if you had a big flood, that would not flood. Right now we are on the western edge of Franklinton, and we're gonna mosey. We're gonna mosey through back alleys, and we're gonna mosey through backs of stores. What does that tell you? Well, it tells you you might get an nail in your tire, which I have done recently and had to get a new tire. But then you can see how well an alley is kept, and how well an alley is kept, or back areas are kept, is reflective of the care people have in their areas. This is not bad back here. There's no graffiti on the wall. There's no trash on the ground. There's no trash around the dumpsters. All good signs that people care about their neighborhood. Now, Franklinton is one of those communities that has not only the recycling you can see, but they also have the 300-gallon trash containers. 
which means that that container is for two or three houses. Uh, and if you just, well, let's just drive down this alley and come back. So here we are, driving down an alley in Franklinton. the problems these have is people at midnight will come here and put, put materials in it they're not supposed to. For instance, here's one right here where it appears as though probably somebody came at night and put this in the trash can. It shouldn't be there and now somebody's got to do something with it. Let's go up one more and then we'll swing around and go down Bellows Avenue and check out Bellows Elementary. What's good about this so far is there's there's very little, if any, graffiti, but you can see the vacant houses with the high grass. It's a persistent problem. It can be overwhelming, but it's something they have to deal with. There's an abandoned elementary school down here. It's called Bellows, and let, let's just take a look at that. Because this, this has been vacant for a long time, and it's deteriorating, but then the question becomes, what do you do with the structure? Now, it sits on the, it sits right next to the freeway system, and some folks were concerned that if you put any money in it, the freeway system expand and eventually buy it and tear it down. But we're going to go up here and we're going to check out, check out Bellows. But there's the school, and it's been sitting here vacant for years. And it was built, of course, before these freeways were here. Elementary school. I can think of no more beautiful structure in Columbus, Ohio, than this Avondale Elementary School. If you just come out, if you come out to Frank and look at this building, look at the brickwork, look at the architectural features. I mean, it is a gem sitting in Franklinton, and I wish everybody could come and see it because it's just beautiful. It's it's quite an attraction, and it sits very near, as you can see, to the east of it is. Mount Carmel Hospital. But just take a look at this. Look at this structure. Just fantastic. Don't think we build things like that today, but we can't lose that building. Uh, we'd go on trips and my, my friends would say, well, why don't we use the interstates? I said, well, because the interstates don't tell you really what the communities were like. Let's go down to Martin. There's a very interesting plaque on a stone here down at Martin. And this is something that... I remember Franklinton was... When we think of history, we think basically of how Europeans look at history of a country. There were human beings that lived here in Franklinton that didn't come from England or Spain. They, they came across the Bering Strait. Now they're called Native American. But up here is a plaque. And I want to, and it, it really speaks to our history and a history that we really, I don't know how you can really be too proud of it because of what it did. But here is a plaque. It says, near this spot, June 21st, 1813. You're talking 200 years ago. On this spot was held a council between General William Henry Harrison and the Indians comprising Wyandotte, Delawares, Shawnees, and Senecas with Tare the Crane, that was the name of the chief, as spokesperson resulting in permanent peace with the Indians of Ohio. Now this was put here in uh, 1904 by the daughters of the American Revolution, but you know, this is reflective. I mean, the, this land was populated by human beings, not of European descent. They're gone now. But they had this land first. I'm going to go right in here, and I want to show you another plaque. This is Graham Ford, or what was Graham Ford? It's left. Across the street over there is the old, old, uh, not being used now school for Holy Family. This is a plaque that probably doesn't get noticed much because who would ever stop here except us. Uh, this plaque is to mark the home of Lucas Sullivan, who under authority from Virginia came to an unbroken wilderness and with 20 men surveyed this portion of the Virginia military lands. Later, he returned and in, and in 1797 laid out the town of Franklinton. One of the things, when you mosey, you, you notice things in Sometimes you find homeless camps and people doing things. Let's go over here. I want to show you a hole in the fence. Now, 
if you come here, you see a chain link fence. And you can notice, you can notice it's open. Well, if you look in there, you can see some butt ice, you can see some empty beer cans. You get a sense that this is where people came and maybe slept, stayed, hung out, partied. You'll find these things in various uh, parts of our neighborhoods. The other thing you notice is uh, when you have property that, that's, that's, you're not sure to take care of, you start getting high grass. And that could be a problem. We're on Souter, going south. We're going to cross Bellows again. Right there across, that's the Interstate 70 traffic. Uh, we're going to go over to Mound Street. Why are we going to go to Mound Street? Because this is where a baseball stadium was. It used to be called the Columbus Redbirds back in the 30s. And then they went and left town. And then for a while it was the Columbus Jets. Then it became the Columbus Clippers. And then the Clippers moved to Huntington Park in the Arena District. See that old sign, Cooper Stadium, general parking, permit parking? That's now something of the past, because up here is Cooper Stadium. It was named for Harold Cooper, a Franklin County Commissioner and a former president of the International Baseball League. The Franklin County Sheriff used to have an office here. And you can see We'll show you some what's going on. There's some demolition work going on. We'll just drive in here before they kick us out. But there on the right, you can see is some uh, uh, demolition work. Fencing's going on. But part of the stadium has been torn down. That's the view here. There you can see it work through there, uh, demolition crew that tore down part of the stadium. It was Cooper Stadium. Over here is the Columbus Pride Center. This is where the city, through Mayor Coleman's initiatives, have put a one-stop shop city services, so health, code, fire, to try to make sure the neighborhoods are getting the services they need. One of the things our office, the Columbus City Attorney's Office, has as a unit is something we call the Zone Initiative. The city of Columbus is divided into five zones by the Division of Police. We have a lawyer working with each zone, and these lawyers are out in the neighborhoods on a regular basis. They go to police roll calls and get to know the police. They work with code enforcement, health department, building department, zoning and with the civic associations and neighborhood groups so our folks know what's going on in the neighborhoods and we listen. We listen to see if there's problems that we might be able to help resolve. A lot of it's nuisance abatement, uh, houses that need to be rehabilitated or demolished, uh, carryouts or liquor permit holders that aren't following the laws they should. All right, now we're gonna go east on, east on Broad see a lot of these vacant structure, vacant land. That's because a lot of times they had fire in these places. They got destroyed with fire. But you look downtown, you can see the Lebec Tower, you can see the Rhodes Tower as you proceed. I mean, it's flat here. Just think of the side of the river to the left. Think of when the big flood, it just flooded across this land. Again, that's what was called the bottoms. Let's go here and show you Here's Chicago Elementary. Here's another elementary. This is Chicago Avenue Elementary. Now it was it was bored up for the longest time, but now it's had new life. So there, as you can see, someone has found purpose in it, and now they have it alive again, doing a useful purpose, taking care of kids. Now on our left is an example of what Columbus has been doing, which is old demolished old houses that need to be demolished are being demolished. And here's an example of a blight being removed from a neighborhood. And the question becomes, now there's a vacant lot. Who takes care of it? Well, perhaps someone who lives next to it will purchase it and take care of it. But then you can see also here on Chicago, there's one, two houses that are bored up, three, four, five in a row, six houses in a row here in Chicago. So while you can see a success and improvements, then you can see how we have a long way to go. 
again, you can see Broad Street is broad. And the issue is trying to get consistent economic development. But to get economic development, you have to have people with purchasing power. People are willing to come and buy from that merchant, buy from that vendor. Where are they going to go shop? Where do you live? Where do you shop? Franklin has some active organized groups, the Franklin Board of Trade, the Franklin Area Commission, the Homeowners Association. So there are people who organize as a community for the betterment of Franklinton, concerned about the, the residential structures, concerned about the business vitality. This is a cemetery that would, you wouldn't really know that's here unless you'd know it was here. It's the old Franklin Cemetery. This is a relatively new sign used to come out here and there was another sign that somebody stole the sign. But let me read it. It says, uh, is this ancient burial ground of Central Ohio was established in a bend of the Scioto River in 1799. The pioneers buried here are about 100 in number. 71 graves are marked, largely by sandstone slabs, many having elaborate carved drawings. Also buried here is at least one soldier of the American Revolution, the Reverend Seth Noble first minister of the frontier town. In 1811, the first church in the community was built here by Lucas Sullivan. Now, Lucas Sullivan was buried here, but his remains were moved to the Greenlawn Cemetery. Let's now leave Franklinton. Let's go across the new Main Street Bridge. And as we cross, if you look to your left, you'll see Kosai over there. That was Central High School, which is the principal high school that served Franklinton. And that's our tour of Franklinton as we cross the Main Street Bridge, again crossing the Scioto River, going back into downtown Columbus. <laughs> careful that you look out for other traffic because <laughs> sometimes yeah well you know be careful when you drive on a mosey and if you become uh, overly interested you can irritate other drivers try not to do that <laughs> 